Hello everyone, this is Tailsfan109 and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. In the last video, we have gone to Dragon Roost Island with an extra heart container and made our way into the Dragon Roost Cavern to help out with Valu business so that we can get Din's Pearl from Prince Komali. Now this is our first true dungeon experience of the game, so let's get down to it. We just solved our first puzzle. It's a block puzzle. It was easy. And look! Vocal blends! They're still easy. They're still stupid! Bye bye. Did you drop a joy pendant? No. You dropped money, and I don't need money, because, well, I'm full. Oh, this is called a warp pot. There are three of these scattered throughout the main dungeons generally. Whenever you activate one, usually by getting it open like that, you can just go ahead and jump in them to warp to other parts of the dungeon. It's a type of fast travel, which is pretty convenient. Especially since there can, the dungeons can be pretty darn linear, so being able to quickly get to another part of the dungeon is convenient. Anyways, let's light these torches to get a treasure chest. I love treasure chests. I also love... Oh, that's not music. It is a small key, though. Yay. Alright, there we go. Let's move on and get into a sort of central hub. This room looks... Cool. Gives a nice impression for the first main dungeon. I say first main dungeon because we were in Forsaken Fortress. That is a dungeon, but it wasn't a typical dungeon experience. This is more like it. And let's go this way. The other way doesn't look like a good idea right now. Oh, look! Blocks! Yay for block puzzles. They're easy. Uh, man, I can only imagine how hot this place would be. I am not very good with heat, so I would hate this area in real life. Also, all the lava just roaming about. Let's just run away from the bats. I'm having trouble hitting them. Anyways, here's a bomb flower, which we can use to blow up rocks again. Uh, this first dungeon is gener generally very very straightforward although this room introduces a neat little mechanic we've got some uh, water jugs here however we can throw them into the lava to create platforms yay platforms and yay music I love getting maps in Zelda games because I just love looking at the size and shape of the dungeons. As we can see, this dungeon has four floors. It looks pretty darn big for an early game dungeon, but we'll be able to get through it just fine. It, you really can't get too lost in this dungeon. Oh! Oh, two jellies! I was weird as a kid. Whenever these guys jumped, I imagine they were saying, I got an idea! I got an idea! I don't know. I, I always thought they were kind of funny. Red Chew Jelly. Oh, wait. I showed you these guys earlier in the previous video. I kind of forgot about that. I never explored that island when I was really young. I just went straight to Dragon Roost. Ooh, it's a dark room. What kind of scary jump scares will there be? Anyway, the vocal ones don't have any extra health. So next time, we will hopefully attack him in a way that he drops his joy pendant. But we'd have to run into another vocal one somewhere. Oh, we can use this sword to break these. Yes, that is the puzzle of this room. It's another small key. We are doing splendidly. Ooh, was that a heart? It was a heart. I'm not gonna get it. I didn't get it. Now I'll never have my quarter heart back. This is a mainly slow and unwieldy. But it's kind of cool how this game allows you to take other enemies' weapons to use temporarily. That'll be revisited Avenging Scoured Sword. And then, of course, Breath of the Wild. Every weapon is a thing. <laughs> Alright, this one is kind of hard. Trying to actually hit the bomb with one of these items because uh, the hitbox 
of the bomb can be a little particular. See? Actually, let's see if I can just thrust. I, I never tried that. Oh. Ooh, that's not gonna work. If you run out of stuff, you'll just have to go to the door again to respawn everything. I'm mainly not very good at this. As you can clearly tell. Oh, there we go. There. I guess technically you don't have to do that puzzle. You could just go all the way around again. But whatever, let's do it that way instead. And there we go. We'll be back in here in a higher floor later. As you can see, this dungeon is pretty darn simple. Not much in terms of the puzzles for the most part, but it's got a real nice aesthetic and atmosphere to it. It really is probably one of the most interesting looking first dungeons in the franchise, honestly. Jump scare! Shouldn't jump like that. You could get hurt in very, very uncomfortable ways there. Puzzle time! We get to burn wood! That's fun. Imagine if you could have done that in the N64 games or something like that. That would have been fun. But then you would have been burning the inside of a tree. Oh! It's the mooing birds! Moo! That's funny. This is a bridge. We might want to do jump attacks here, because we could easily fall off the bridge otherwise. You can cut the strings of the bridge, and if you do that, eventually it will break, and you'll fall to your doom. And we better wait here. Even if you break only like half of the ropes, the bridge might break. Look, it's a helmet crow, or as I like to think of him as, the mooing bird. Although he doesn't really move much once he starts attacking you. Let's try and kill him for a feather. I'm not getting that feather, am I? It's worth it! I know fall damage. This link is very good at not taking fall damage. Mainly fall damage in this game is incredibly lenient. Even if you drop like 500 feet, you'll still only take like one heart of damage. Fall damage wouldn't really become too deadly until like Twilight Princess. You could definitely take a nasty fall in Twilight Princess. I forgot about Skyward Sword, and then of course Breath of the Wild is, well, Breath of the Wild. I think it's kind of a cool touch how the music stops when you're within the outdoor regions of the cavern. You're technically not in the dungeon anymore, so instead, you just hear the winds of how high up you are. I think it's kind of cool. And we've got a little bit of these edge puzzles where we got to figure out the best way to get across to reach a bomb. Oh, I hear a mooing bird. <laughs> mooing birds. Does it sound like a moo to you guys? I always thought it sounded like a moo ever since I was six years old when I first started playing this. I love it. There we go. That'll do it nicely. Let's go inside. Back into the darkness. Now there is a secret hole somewhere here, but it just leads to a few rupees. You'd have to push more blocks on, and my wallet's full, so I'm not even going to bother. Now here are some rats. Oh, hello. Hey. Link, have you seen any filthy thieving rats around? I know they're annoying, but keep your wits about you. They are only rats. If you spread bait near their nest, they may share their sore treasure with you. Why don't you try it? Yeah, I never took note of that as a kid, but yeah, we can put some uh, bait by a rat's nest, and they'll stop attacking us. And something else. Yes, yes. I got a real good outside here. For real. Will it be for you? Oh, that stinks. Sometimes you could get, like, red or blue potions from these guys, but uh, I can't buy this stuff. I'm maxed. Oh, well, they won't attack us anymore, so now we can do the puzzles in this dungeon easily, which includes taking out another block and another 
torch puzzle of sorts. Um, you can throw stuff. Ugh. Link's a good thrower. He's the best thrower in the franchise. I can't throw to save my life. I'm weak. It's a compass! I always thought the needle on the compass in this game looked like an ice cream cone. Uh, just, just watch. Does that not look like ice cream to you? I always thought it looked like ice cream. Yep. I can't help it. That white arrow is so like a vanilla ice cream swirled together. And the red is the red cone, I guess. Anyways, we got a key. Uh, let's go outside so I stop talking about stupid stuff that stems all the way back from my childhood. But I've got a lot of memories with this game. <sighs> I've already told you about the mooing birds. I would sometimes just listen to them for like 10 minutes straight because it sounded like they were mooing. We're not getting that feather. He was guarding a key, by the way. I think that's a fun little additional thing to do for the outside. This dungeon has a lot of fun little random bits to it. Like this really dark cavernous hallway. Which has bats. Which bats in this game really act like bats. If you move if you don't move too much, they'll like listen for you, and if you stop moving, they won't come after you, because they won't rely on their echolocation. Although I don't think bats are completely blind, so... Oh, yeah, see? We stopped moving for a while, so they ig ignored us. There we go. Oh, shoot, I'm in the darkest. Bat! Go away! No, leave me alone! Ah, no! Go away! Leave me alone! Let's light some torches and get out of here. Torch puzzle. Isn't... I like those little random rooms they include here. Oh. There's this war pot here. I'm probably not gonna need it, but let's free it anyway. I'll un okay, I'll at least demonstrate it. Once you've unlocked at least two of the three pots in a dungeon, you can go in them to reach earlier other parts of the dungeon. It's good for a backtracking tool or to catch up in case you have to leave the dungeon or you die or something like that. You shouldn't really die in this game, though. This one is really easy. With the exception of one or two particular optional sections in the game, for the most part, this game is really easy, generally. <laughs> but it's fun. I love the combat system in this game so much. It comes more into play when we start dealing with tougher monsters. And, of course, get more items. There we go. Now, um, there's a little bit of st stuff to worry about in this room, actually. We need to find all the vocal blends, but they're hidden in various pots. Which means we actually have to break some shelves, which, if you talk to Orca early on in Wind Waker ye in the game, now that I'll make certain things fall. Which is really darn good tutorializing. I keep thinking there's one above on the upper ladder. I'm always wrong about that, though. Anyways, let's use one of the Boko uh torches to light this. I think they call it a Boko stick. A Baba stick? I don't remember. It comes from a Boko Baba. Now, what could this be? Is it the dungeon item? No, it's a treasure chart. In this game, in the main dungeons, generally speaking, there are usually two treasure charts to find. And they usually require a little extra thinking or going out of your way. They tend to have some of the dungeons more difficult puzzles, I guess, shall we say? They're usually not too difficult, though, because this game is still pretty easy. Although this part, oh, screw this part as a kid. One of the worst things to deal with was that baby Goma. And yes, Gomas are basically centipedes in this game, but the easiest way to kill these guys, if they would attack, is with a parry attack. Oh shoot. Oh, oh, 
Whoa. Uh, the platform ran out. You see, normally when you hit them, they'll curl up into a ball. Like that. Okay. Oops. <laughs> I'll admit, this is one of the tougher rooms of the dungeon. Mostly because of that baby Goma. It actually is in a pretty nasty spot. But you don't lose a lot of health for falling to lava. It looks like you just lose a quarter heart. And this blink doesn't even sink into the lava. He just burns his butt. Alright, let's see if this is... Oh, it's centered enough. There we go. This room gave me a lot of grief as a kid. I think you can imagine why. But it's a fun little puzzle segment, and it, it challenges you a little bit. The, ga the game should challenge you at least a slight bit. It is kind of your first true dungeon test. Oh, and um, we got some more rocks to destroy. Now, this is a setup I find really fun. You can see the boss door on the other side of the lava pit. It looks so grandiose, but you know you can't get in yet, because you haven't found the boss key yet. It's kind of fun when a dungeon in a Zelda game shows you the boss door long before you even get to the boss key. It's like, oh my gosh, it's right there, but I can't get in yet. I just think it's fun. Oh, now when the screen fades like this, it generally means you're entering a mini-boss if it's not a boss door. And there's Valu! Oh, yeah, he does not look happy. We should probably do something about it, right? Yeah, let's go. Good. Ah! Oh, I didn't go as well as planned. I was hoping I could make Link turn around, see what was happening, and then make a run for it. I thought it would be fun. Oh, well. Ah! Fun set piece. <laughs> And right into a mini boss. Elite Boko Blins? We've already done this. Well, we know what to do here. But at least we get to hear the all mini boss tune, because the mini boss tune is really not good. Leave me alone? I'm trying to fight someone already. There. Okay, mini boss win. I win. Give me my prize. Yeah, that was a fake out. This is the real mini boss. The Moblins from Forsaken Fortress. But this time, we have a sword, so we can actually deal with them. You want to be careful when knocking them down, because sometimes they'll do a big sucker punch, and they can also block with their staff, so generally you probably want to wait for a parry attack a lot of the time. Although sometimes you could sneak in some hits. He may do a sucker punch here, and it can actually hurt. You can block it with shield, though. Or he could just flat out miss. That happens sometimes. On their own, a Moblin's not too bad, but dealing with more than one at a time, and they could be a little daunting. Also, they drop skull necklaces. These items you generally give to certain people as a side quest of sorts to get something. Sometimes the reward's great, sometimes it's not so great. But, it happens. And look, Melly got trapped, but we saved her. Why? You came to rescue me! Oh, thank you! I have to tell you what I found out. This is terrible! Some creature's doing awful things to the Great Valu's tail! That's why he's so angry! The Great Valu's tail hangs down in the room right below here. There's gotta be something in there. I wonder those mean monsters who capture me have something to do with it. We've got to do something now before it's too late. I'll go and tell everyone what's happening. Here, Link, use this to get out of here. It's what I used to get this far. It's a device we Rito used before we evolved wings. Thank you, the grappling hook. This is a good item right here. We will demonstrate it later, but it's great to use against enemies, for one particular reason. Here, Link! Climb up on that little ledge over there so I can show you something! Well, that's going to wait for next video, because we still have a fair bit of dungeon left to cover. But until then, this has been TalesFam109, have a nice day!